I hope you have a great coffee. I know it's a very last yeah. So today I am presenting natural language processing. My name is Govin. I have I'm from India actually. I just here for to attend and present here. I have around 13 years of experience with the Drupal and other web technologies. I'm working as a technical lead at Salsa. So today I'll discuss about the natural language processing. It's a part of uh, AI. Uh, I don't know if you uh, remember or attend the last day's session. The man just provide the AI powered Drupal. So thanks to him to provide the good context about the AI, how you can utilize the AI with the Drupal. I'll more talk about the natural language processing behind the scene you can see what exactly the things so what's inside i'll discuss about the introduction with the capabilities of the natural language processing we'll talk more about the how nlp actually work and how we can utilize in a drupal we will also discuss about the drupal modules that we have already have and what else we can implement we can So, first thing, introduction, what is NLP? So, it says natural. What exactly the meaning of natural? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. So, if I say, hi man, you can understand. Definitely. If I'm saying, hello brother, you can understand. If I'm saying, haan bhai kaisa hai, can you understand? Yes, a few people can understand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so this is all about the natural. So, if people can understand the language naturally. So, by the definition, it's a <coughs> refer to the branch of computer science, and more specifically, the branch of artificial intelligence. It's concerned with giving computers the ability to understand text or spoken words in much the same way a human being can. So it's always talk about the interaction between a human and a computer, you can say. So how a computer can easily understand a human language. So how exactly this all started? So in actually NLP started a very early stage before the AI, you can say. Yeah, so it's a part of AI actually, but yeah, it started when people want to understand each other languages. So in 1950, Alan Turing, uh, like he published an article about the computing machinery and intelligence. In that article, he mentioned about, can a computer think? What do you think? Can a computer think? So <clears throat> after that, he just defined a Turing test to just provide a criteria of intelligence. Like if you talk about a computer, how smart he is. So as a criteria of intelligence, Turing test is a one thing that you can look into that. So after that, it's a small progress in NLP or AI field until 1980s. So in 1980s, IBM developed a few of the statistical model for the natural language processing. Then after in 2000, uh, there's a good progress because a Yoshio Benjo and his team proposed a neural language model using a feed-forward neural network. So that, that is where NLP combined with the deep learning, machine learning, you can say. In 2011, everyone aware about the Siri? So, hey Siri, how are you? <laughs> they introduced a uh, like speech modulation uh, module, so they can understand what exactly human are speaking in any language, it doesn't matter which language you are speaking, but yeah, it, it matters how exactly they implement it, in which language they are supporting. So this is how Siri is using the NLP. It's a more thing about the Google, Alexa, everyone is using the NLP. So they can understand the language in a human manner, they can action whatever the, like as a human do the answer. So <coughs> the NLP have consists of two components actually. One is the NLU, natural language understanding. The another part is 
natural language generation so if it <coughs> if you are trying to interact to a computer or a person you what you need they can understand you and they can respond back to you so the same thing what is an nlu is it deals with the understanding a given text interpret it and just provide the meaning and it just structurize the data whatever we are trying to give so let's suppose a computer can only understand the structured data not unstructured data so first step is to understand the language you need to stru structurize it so <coughs> nl u is to unstruct to manage the unstructured data in a structured data to convert that now the other part if you are talking about how computer will respond it back in a natural language that is natural language generation or why exactly i'm talking about nlp this is whole thing you can see the statistics this is actually really good and those are from a very good uh, statistista there is a good uh, provider for the statistics you can also look into online this is the market value of the nlp look into it implement it and earn money it's all about money this is the revenue stream that you can see with the nlp i'm not going into this but yeah so th these are the like basic use cases you can think of nlp there are a couple of things uh, like if we already discussed in yesterday's uh, like presentation but i still i would like to mention these few language translation that i like everybody want to understand one other uh, do you know how many languages are like kind of spoken by a person or in human in a word well, that's just in india ah yeah you yeah, perfectly right <laughs> it's it's more than 7000 actually so i i don't think so i can understand i can only understand hindi and english so i don't aware about any other language yeah marwari this is spoken language you can say yeah that's a dialect talk so uh, with the language translation if you want to translate something the nlp is a best practice that you should follow application should follow so they can translate in a good manner actually actually the thing is that if you are talking like a person you can use slangs you can do the sarcasm so computer can't understand those thing so this is where nlp comes search engine results if you just google and if you just want to uh, let's say i want to book a flight it will show you not the result it will show you that you can easily book the flight from google directly so this is where nlp came he can understand your context he can provide you more good result thing there are other few use cases so you already aware about the siri google, uh, alexa and all that's a virtual assistant chatbots you can if like chatbots are mainly utilized like in the customer industry so you can definitely automate the, those for the better automation uh, customer service email filter spam detection sentimental analysis social media monitoring text analytics predictive text i think okay so now how nlp actually working the behind the scene so it's a very simple process they just took the input provide you the output <laughs> this is something that you can easily understand so in the image you can see nlp can uh, can be look into text video audio so someone asked in the uh, previous uh, presentation that can we extract something from the video or something like that so you can do with the nlp you can definitely uh, process the <coughs> video transcript and get the summary or tags or whatever entities you want so this is the first thing in the nlp there are sub tasks nlp perform there are phases in nlp we will discuss in a later phase but yeah there is a sub task every phase have these are the sub task available in nlp so first thing is segmentation it's a very simple thing uh, in the first step it just take the whole text divide into simple sentences so we can perform the further step <coughs> the next step is a tokenization it's as simple as that everything a word is a token uh, like you can see this is a sample so i'm tokenizing is a this is a sample 
if I have a dot at the end of this, that could also be a token. Now the other thing is it will perform stamming or limitization. This is very crucial in terms of NLP because without this you can't understand the meaning of the word. So stamming and limitation are kind of similar but stamming means uh, it just refer to get the root stem of the word. It just provide like any suffix, prefix in the word they just remove and you will get the final word. But might not be get uh, get the right word, so that's why we have a limitization. Limitization will also do the same thing. It just chop off the final thing, but it also check the dictionary that this word is available or not. You, you can see in the screen, like the chain chains something, and you get the chain. But with the limitization, you will get the in the final finalize finally you get the final word. So this is how the stemming and limitation will work. Now the other thing is removing the stop word. It's not about the whole thing that we need to remove, but the words that are not affecting uh, the final context of the statement, we can remove that so we can easily understand the context of a sentence. Now the best part is part of speech tagging. Like part of speech, it means when you are a small child, you need to understand how you can frame the sentences, what are the different things yet that you need to combine. So you, the first thing you need to understand, what are the verbs, a conjunction, every, everything that you can see in this diagram, we have noun, verb, noun, what are these things. So if you understand these things, you can frame the sentences. So this is the thing that <coughs> NLP perform. And then we can extract entities. Entities are named entity recognition. They just, and it could be anything. It's like organization, location, date, time, anything. You, you can see in this example, like uh, it's a big paragraph, but I can see the tag colors. You can say location, the terms, date, condition, process, people. So after this stage, NLP will give you good context what exactly this sentence is all about. So these are the phases that I mentioned before. So NLP have five phases, you can see. The lexical analysis, syntax analysis, semantic, discourse, and programmatic analysis. With the lexical analysis, it just recognize and analyze the word structure. The collection of word or phrases in a language is referred as a lexi lexicon. So in, in this stage, it just get the sentence into break down into the uh, words, all the steps that we already discussed, the different, different tasks it perform and get the part of speech, uh, <coughs> POS recognition, tagging, everything it done with the lexical analysis. Now with the lexical analysis, we have the few meanings available. We will pass it to the syntax analysis to check or to frame the sentence syntactically correct. Okay, so with the syntax analysis, it just frame the sentence first. Like this is an apple, or you can see it's a correct sentence syntactically. If I'm using the same words with the different, you can say sequence, this is in the last, like apple and this, whatever something. So this is maybe grammatically it is correct, but it doesn't have any kind of meaning. So after the syntax analysis, you will do the <laughs> semantic analysis just to get the correct sentence with the proper meaning. So semantic analysis is to provide you the meaning of sentence. Grammatically, it is correct because we already passed with the uh, syntactic analysis. So now you have a sentence with the proper meaning. Let's suppose uh, if I pass a sentence like, uh, my mobile is eating banana. Uh, do you really think that it could possible? So NLP with the uh, with this semantic analysis, this text or sentence will like it can be discarded because it's not proper sentence. It's not a logical sentence. So then after we will do the discourse integration. Discourse integration is just about like uh, to get the reference or the context of the whole thing. So. It's some, sometimes you have 
like two phrases in a single sentence to understand the context of second one you should need to have the first sentence available like this is my mobile i bought it if i am saying i bought it you can't understand it what it is actually referring to so this part of uh, discourse analysis in nlp provide the context using the different uh, sentences what are the different meaning of a particular uh, let's take another example like i'm reading a book and also i'm saying the book is uh, the book is very good so book there are two things some if you are using book as a booking the flight it's a different meaning if you are saying i'm reading a book that's a different meaning so nlp also need to understand those ambiguity final thing is about uh, the pragmatic analysis this is the final stage where we also have the references grammatically correct sentence everything is available now we need to understand the intent of the uh, sentence if i'm saying like oh man just close the door what is the intent we it's on order request whatever it could be anything so you need to understand as a human you can understand what my tone is what my thing is how exactly i'm saying you can easily understand but a computer can't understand you just have the close the door okay close the door share your screen what is, you don't have any context i am saying that share the re, share the screen of my computer screen or any other screen whatever so i uh, there are very good <laughs> products available i'm just providing you the context so you can utilize them there are freely available few of them but yeah ibm watson is a very good product uh, to get a uh, play around with the uh, nlp so you can write your own algorithm write your own machine learning or deep learning algorithm to get the uh, correct output and all so google nlp is available amazon also provides some services azure and nltk open ai that we discussed a lot in yesterday's so open ai is also very good tool right now okay so uh, i'm just showing you how they are doing nlp so what are the phases the output of the uh, like if i'm providing input as a text what could be the output how we can utilize in your uh, system so just give me a moment i am sharing my so this is the <coughs> watson demo you can see oh, one second i need to Sorry about that. That's full screen. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, like, I can provide a URL or uh, something text. Anything I can do that. So, I'm just providing a URL. Uh, it's a good article from the Gartner. So, I'm trying to get extract the information. from there if i analyze this url see this uh, this is what a google nlp will do what's oh, uh, what's okay wait for so uh, with the nlp whatever i mention you the task different uh, entities different categorization so this is the ibm watson demo the in the api you can see this is linguistic so it also apply the first thing is syntactic analysis it do the tokenization it get the limit uh, word lemma part of speech tagging it so every nlp should perform these basic tasks and then you can extract the major information uh, about the keywords that what are the different keyword and relevant score so using the nlp algorithm you can identify different kind of uh, uh, entities category keywords that can be utilized in a cms to categorize your content auto tagging auto summarization so different kind of things you can do with that so these are the entity you can see the gartner is an organization 
IT executive, Gartner IT. So this is the NLP. There is a algorithm is going on behind this, and they are providing this kind of data. I do have a Google API uh, as well. This is that is also provide the similar kind of uh, uh, things. They provide different output. You just need to use the API, or you can create your own with the Drupal integration. Uh, like I have a simple algorithm. Uh, it's a static algorithm. It's not an AI based. But yeah, there's a module available. We'll discuss in a bit. So what we can do with the Drupal? So lots of things we can do. But a simple thing. It's just as simple as that content classification. So every content editor want to classify the content because we need to show not only the content, related content, some. So you need to categorize the content so you can manage easily. Using the NLP, it's a best practice and they are quite good. If you have the right algorithm, you will definitely get the right keywords available to tag and you can utilize the content classification in a, using the NLP. The other is a sentimental analysis. Is like, it's a very good actually. If you are a uh, business person and you want to get the sentiment of the user, you can analyze the feedback, analyze the blog, analyze anything you can analyze as a text and you can get the good reviews. Uh, sentimental, it's a positive, negative, neutral. You can also get the emotion, like what's exactly they are uh, trying to say, not about the sentiment, it's just like they're sad or like it's a joy, whatever. So these kind of things also can be uh, predicted by the NLP algorithm. This is a automatic text summarization. So in text summarization, they <coughs> what exactly they are doing? They use the algorithm to get the matrix. Then after they <coughs> using that matrix, they will figure out the word tokens, and after that they provide the summarization. I'll I'll just provide you a quick demo how they are converting it. Image tagging, it's a very good thing because most of the times you use the image from a Google or any other place. If, but if you really want to extract the actual meaning or actual thing from the image, you can use the NLP behind that. You can tag that, you can classify, or like for the captioning, for the alternate tags, you can use the NLP algorithm. There are lots, uh, again, like for the SEO metadata, it's a very, really good thing to generate the automatic tags, automatic description for a page, so you don't need to worry about the SEO anymore. Just implement the NLP and it's good to go. So there are other uh, use cases as well. With the Drupal you can do. Uh, uh, let me show you the quick thing with the, uh, it's not an AI algorithm, it's a manual algorithm that uh, text, rank, text rank is an algorithm to predict the text ranking. So if you provide a input text, it will generate a matrix and according to that matrix it will provide you summarization and all. So this is this is a like basic site I'm just trying to do. It's an article I'm using content from the Drupal South Brisbane. So just copying it. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm putting it here and adding title and South. And there's a tag and summary. I'm just leaving them right now and we'll see what will happen. So if I go to my home page, this is Drupal Saw. There's a, some automatic summaries available. There's a tags also available. If I go on the page itself, you can see. But this is not an AI algorithm, I must say, because it's a text rank. So you, you can do that. You can create your own algorithm. So you just need to understand NLP to do the, those things. So you can say there's a tags, 
there's a summary so <coughs> this is all about the drupal integration and all there are a lot of things but due to limited time i cannot provide more stuff here <laughs> There are a couple of modules available. You can utilize them, play around it. I found very good uh, output for the Google NLP. Though few modules are not stable, but I like I did some research, tried that out, and it's really good. Google NLP is a very good. It's a freeware available right now. You can try it out with your an integration. Augmenter, I must mention that's a very good module they started, so it's also good. Okay guys, uh, don't forget to attend this code sprint <laughs> tomorrow. Okay, any questions and all? Know that I'm not a subject matter expert, but I can definitely try to give more context. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, the demonstration you had there was, was bringing back structured content, you know, the Wikipedia example where you had tags yeah. and the type. How do you see that kind of content being integrated into Drupal where you have that more structured data? So it's, it's not just tags, but you're, you're looking at the entities where you have types and yeah, things yeah. like that. Do you have ideas on, on how that yeah, might that, help? That's why I mentioned it's AI powered. It should be AI powered so you can have more context around the text. This is why machine learning and deep learning is like it's, it's there for with the NLP. But NLP about how you understand the human behavior, human language. It's not about what are you, like how computer are responding. First thing, they need to understand the language, then after they can provide you more good content. That's why we have the machine learning behind, so we can feed more data, more things, so they can learn. And after that, they process on those tags and provide you good content. That's why I mentioned Google NLP, Ivan Watson, because they have done like years of work out there and they are doing it. Maybe if you have that kind of capability, just create your own algorithm, figure out from the internet, there's a free things available to get the more context of data. If you're starting out in this area, which um, tool would you recommend to start with? <laughs> it's pretty hard to say that, uh, but like, I analyze few things. Uh, in static method, tax rank is quite good. If you want to create your own algorithm, you can start with that. But yeah, if you just want to utilize the existing, or uh, you don't want to reinvent the wheel, go with the IBM Watson and Google NLP. That they are quite good actually. Do we have any more questions? Uh, the tools that you were showing seem to be pretty much making uh, API calls, external calls. Are there any that will run as part of the uh, Drupal, like a Drupal module, Drupal code base? Yeah, uh, the, what I showed, it's a part of Drupal, Drupal module. It's not an external API. That I so, so they're doing the, um, sorry, a bit close. Uh, they're actually doing the, the uh, analysis on the server where you're running Drupal, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's a oh, PHP okay. script. That's why I mentioned text strength is an algorithm. Right. I also mentioned this uh, reference about the text strength. You can see this one, text strength. Right, yeah. Uh, there's a GitHub repo. You can definitely look into that. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? All right. Thanks, Thanks guys.